Hello, Heart of the Lion Ministries. I am live. I didn't realize this was going to go live so fast. But um, I am actually here in Puget Sound uh, area of the Seattle uh, area here in, in Washington. And I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of a different scenery because I've always been in my car the last few videos. So um, I'll give a few minutes in case a few people want to... Um, check this out live if not no big deal i just wanted a little bit of a different scenery drop before speaking about the courts of heaven and another key element of judgment but i'll give you a little bit of a view there the boat yard actually so there we go so Hopefully you enjoy that backdrop in the public, so I'll try not to be too distracted. But I wanted to speak about, I would call it another key element and follow-up with the courts of heaven and the judgments of God. And that is Matthew chapter 5, verses 25. But once again, I have to read a few scriptures above so you know uh, what is going on. So I'm going to start in verse 22. This is extremely, extremely important. Um, very important to understand. And I believe, just like I shared earlier in the other video, um, that this is going to unclog and unblock a lot of people uh, from their frustrations and unanswered prayers. This one might be maybe a little bit more clear, but um, definitely very, very important. But in verse 22, it says, but I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause, and it does say without a cause, but anyhow, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell fire. So before even going further, look, this is declaring your actions don't bring you judgment. That should be obvious. That is a reality. But your words bring you judgment because here God is using an example, but he's saying if you're saying these two or three different things, you are in danger of hellfire. Not just the things you're doing, even though words are doing something, but you're not necessarily punching or slapping somebody. You are saying something that is hurting their feelings. So, point of the matter is, words do damage by themselves and will bring you into judgment unto God. Verse 23. Hello, Blaze. How are you doing again? Verse 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Now, the crescendo is the next scripture, actually. However, notice that your brother is going to become your adversary, because as you see here in the next verse, I wanted to um, hold off on verse 25, but I'm going to have to connect that also. Verse 25, agree with your adversary quickly while you're on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown in prison. A lot of key points here. But notice that your brother has turned into adversary. Okay? We could kind of look into that a little bit deeper. But when you're in sin, that offended person becomes your adversary because now there is a case of judgment against you that Satan is allowed to torment you and him. But you see what's going on here? Hello, Jackie. Um, do you see what's going on? That because of sin, <laughs> that person that you have sinned against now becomes your adversary. That's not to say that they were a believer or were not a believer. God's using the reference of a brother, really a brother in Christ. He's become your enemy or your adversary once you have done something wrong. But 
the biggest thing, I, that's just a backdrop. The biggest key that I want to explain, that I want to leave with you, that will probably change your behavior in, because of understanding in Re Revelation is the last part of that scripture. Because I just read the first few because it helps everything in context. But let's get back to verse 25. It says, Agree with your adversary quickly while you were on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown in prison. And then if I couple it with verse 26, Surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of there until you pay the last penny. I think sometimes what happens is we think things are just random in the Bible. We think that things are just coincidence. But God uses this example by no coincidence because like I've explained and you followed me in other uh, videos, the earth is a mirror replica and template, a replica I would say, of heaven. Even though the earth is corrupted and a lot of it is corrupted because of the fall of man and Satan and the devil. But nevertheless, the, the original template is in heaven. Everything relates as legalities would go. This is why Christ went to the cross to destroy the works of sin and so that we can repent and turn to Christ, those who would. So the reason why God uses this example is because the reality of any accusation, not just accusation, it doesn't say here that your brother was right. And this is where I'm going to bring you with the devil, any accusation, whether and it does include correct, and that should be obvious to you to get right with God. But what God is showing here is a principle that it does. God is not saying that you should get right with him because he's right. He's not declaring he's right or wrong. And this is the key that I want to bring illumination and information and revelation to you, is that the Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren, and he doesn't sleep day or night. Meaning, what God is revealing here is whether this brother was right or wrong to be accusing you in anger, angry, and whether the devil is right or wrong, hopefully mostly wrong, in accusing you when you don't agree with the adversary, if you don't agree to hear the situation out, you are by default, not because you're guilty, but by default agreeing with what they're saying. Let me give you an example. If you go to court and you don't show up, what happens? God forbid some of us might have had that happen. Hopefully not. I know what that experience is like through other people and, and how that works. But... If you don't show up, it has nothing to do with your guilt. But if you don't show up, you get a default judgment against you. So when you're agreeing with the adversary, you are not agreeing to guilt. You are not confessing to what he said. What you're doing in the spiritual realm is you're agreeing to take on the accusation. Do you understand that? Hello, everyone else who's uh, joined in. God bless you. Agreeing with the adversary is actually a, I won't call it secret, but it's somewhat an esoteric principle because the devil accuses us night and day. Agreeing with the adversary shows up to the spiritual courts and allows God to challenge that accusation as a lie or truth if you don't show up which if you don't understand this you're not going to be challenging these accusations that the devil throws at you because here God is using a physical example but the devil is accusing us night and day if you are not challenging that every morning every night saying father I agree with the adversary not because of guilt but I just agree because he launches these arrows at us day and night. I place these things before you. And forgive me of anything I have done. But Father, I place those accusations under the shed blood. 
and confess these things, what that does, it allows, it allows you to get off the throne of your own vindication, not to be your own judge because you're not, and it allows God now to take up your situation in case. I hope that's clear to you. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. If you're not challenging those things that are being said behind your back, which I understand why most of us have done that and do do that because we don't have this clear understanding, you are having a, a lot in the courts of heaven, a lot of cases ruled against you that you don't even know about and you're being blocked left and right. This is why if we skip up a few answers, God says when you're coming to the altar, leave your gift there. Because if you don't go through the proper protocol, it doesn't matter what type of sacrifice and prayer you're altering. You're going to be blocked. You're going to be hindered. This is why he says to get right first before you come to worship, before you come to pray, before you come to tithe, before you come to give your, your sacrifice and whatever that offering is. It's going to not mean anything if you're wrong in this area. So agreeing, let me bring this full circle as I know I'm trying not to go long again, but this one is going to be a little bit of uh, a little bit of view again in the background. A little bit of length is agreeing every day and every morning is very important because what it's going to do is actually it's going to disarm the devil and strip the cases of accusation out of his hands and place it fully into God's. Then, like I said in the other video, when this principle is met as well, God will, because he's righteous and just, be able to judge and bring vengeance and true justice to all the injustices that you are participating in because if these accusations are false and wrong, that's injustice as well. And God will be able to execute that justice fully for you when you meet this principle of agreeing with your adversary. Agreeing with the adversary is not saying lie and agree with him. God, that's not God's nature. That's not what he's saying. This is a principle. You need to agree with whether it's true or not. And hopefully most of them are untrue, if not all of them. When you do that, you take the mantle of injustice out of the devil's hands and you place it into God's hands so he can expose the truth. He can be the true light in the investigator and bring true righteousness and justice. This is a key that he has kept hidden, not from the whole body of Christ, but from the majority of the body of Christ, because I'm not going to lie to you or you know pretend like this is my new revelation. This has barely freshly probably the last five, ten years, broken through to a very small remnant. But when you understand this key, and every morning you enter, integrate it into your devotions, into your prayer times, saying, Father, I don't know what's going on. You know the, the lies of the devil, whether it's coming through humans and demons. If it's coming through humans, it's always coming through demons first. So, and mostly, the devil never plays clean. He always does things in secret and he hides things because he doesn't want to be found out. That's how you, that's how you promote a lie is with a partial truth where the whole picture isn't seen. And the best way to keep that in place is to do things in secret and undercover and, and hiding. So every morning when you integrate this in, into your uh, devotions, you also say, with, besides withdrawing the judgments like I explained in the other video, you say, Father, I just agree with whatever the devil is saying and confess and repent and place it under the blood because now you can take the case and strip the devils from that case and be in control, complete control and power. That's what this is saying. He's not saying agree to the lies of, a, of someone wicked. That's not what he's saying. It's all inclusive agreeing yes if you did hurt someone and do something obviously that's pretty obvious but what this is a, a deeper principle besides agreeing if you did something that's not what he's saying he's not encouraging you to just do what's right when you know you did something wrong he's given this is a, a, a high level judicial principle that most of us I including myself have not really understand it stood especially to this point in time 
And so I hope that's pretty clear. This is the other side of the coin of, I believe, many people's breakthrough keys of withdrawing your own judgments because you're not God and agreeing with the adversary. That's what we just spoke about in Matthew 5, 25. As you do that, you take the teeth out of the devil's mouth and you put the scepter completely in God's hands because there is nothing against you and you're following the heavenly spiritual protocols and mechanics of the Bible and of the Word. Anyhow, I'm sure that was a lot longer this time, but I hope this is a huge blessing to you. Here's a wonderful view once again of the Seattle Puget Sound area. Yes, I am right here on the water. I just wanted to give you a beautiful different view. A little bit of a beach there. There. So I hope that blessed you, Father God. I pray that this would minister revelation and truth to everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you guys once again for people showing up. And uh, I pray that this will minister to many other people. As I spoke with you before, I'm really using this because it's really easy for me to transfer this over uh, to YouTube. But God bless every single one of you watching. God bless every single one of you who's going to watch later on from the Puget Sound Northwest area. This is Evangelist Christian. Take care.